Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Uh, you're watching part of our 16 week uh, Woodworking 101 class. It's uh, 16 weeks of lessons on all of the basics that you need to become a woodworker. Uh, for lesson number one, we have decided to break that up into eight small subsections because there's going through all of the tools that are needed for uh, the woodworker and kind of getting the highlights of each one is a little bit tedious. So I just thought I'd break it up into eight small sections. So this is just the next section uh, in, that, uh, in that lesson number one. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. There'll also come a time when you have to make a cut that's not straight. Um, and if you don't have a bandsaw, you're gonna need a jigsaw. There's a lot of different jigsaws on the market. I happen to have a DeWalt because I use the DeWalt 20 volt uh, cordless system, but any jigsaw works just fine. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the features of this, but this is what you're gonna use to make a curved line. If you're gonna cut something that has a curve in it, you're gonna have to have a jigsaw. There are a couple of different blade types that your jigsaw might take depending on the jigsaw that you have. If you get a jigsaw that has a quick release on it, which is this here, then the blades come out quickly and you can replace the blades. This is a T-shanked blade. And typically this is probably the most common one that we use today. Uh, there's an older style that has uh, an Allen wrench that would help you loosen this up to put it in. But I prefer the, uh, the T-shank blades. That makes it a little bit easier. And I have a very old jigsaw here, so it's difficult to, uh, to adjust. We've got a lot of stuff spilled on it, but that's why it does that. And there's another uh, feature that most jigsaws will have, and that is that the table can be changed. This is the table for the jigsaw, and this will loosen it. This will allow us to cut things at different angles, so we don't have to cut a straight 90 degree angle. Um, typically there's a stop, so when you go back to the zero point, it has a stopping point, but if you're ever unsure, it's a good idea to take a square and just check it and make sure it's back at zero before you lock it down. And another interesting feature about a lot of these jigsaws is the way the blade cuts. If you're going to cut a straight cut, then there's a setting for the blade that actually causes the blade to cut in this fashion where it moves forward. It's a very aggressive cut and it really only works for straight line cuts. And that would be in this position. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll operate this so that you can see this here, but the, uh, you can see the blades jumping forward and backward and moving my square forward and back. If you cut in this position down here, the blade only goes straight up and down and that allows for a smoother, cleaner cut. And that's a little bit easier if you're making uh, tight circles. This one, the blade just goes straight up and down. So as far as blades go, I'm a big fan of Bosch blades. Bosch blades are clearly marked with uh, what the blades are for. And most of the Bosch blades are made of high speed steel, which is a very hard and very durable steel for cutting. So they last a long time. And you can get blades of different lengths if you're going to be cutting some longer wood then or some thicker wood, I mean, so like a two by four or even thicker, then you get a long blade, which will cut through that nicely. They're also marked as to what they will cut. This is a bimetal blade. This is an all purpose blade. So this works for wood and metal or wood that may have uh, a nail or something like that in it. They have other blades that are made just specifically for metal and those are usually very fine tooth blades and they'll indicate that it's a, a blade that's for metal. And you should be able to see the the T-shank, the shape of the of the T-shank on the blade. And no matter what jigsaw you have, if it says it accepts T-shanks, it'll accept all of the T-shank blades. And they've even got very uh, fine blades that are strictly for wood. And what I like about the Bosch is they're all generally marked as to what they cut. And that's really all there is to know about the jigsaw. It's a pretty basic tool. It allows you to cut curves, um, just get a good set of blades with it, and practice. That's all it takes to become a master of the jigsaw. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the last of the power tools that we, uh, we use in our shop and uh, that you need to probably have, and that's a sander. Um, sanding is something that's going to consume a lot of your time as a woodworker. Sometimes half of the total time on a project is going to be sanding, so you do want to get a good sander. Um, I, I'm a fan of the rigid sanders. I like, I like a number of their tools because they have a lifetime guarantee. So if the tool goes bad uh, whenever, uh, you just you take it back to Home Depot and they replace it. Uh, so the most common sander that I think you need is a random orbit sander. So this is a sander that does a circular motion here, but in addition to that, the pad will actually 
vibrate up and down and back and forth. So the orbit is sort of random. So it's called a random orbit or a random orbital sander. And this is a five inch, which means the disc is five inches in diameter. And this is the most common sander that we use. We've actually got three or four of these in our shop at any given time. And it's, it's what everybody spends the bulk of their time on. Okay, so after this sander, uh, probably one of the one next most common sander we use is, is something like this. This is a mouse sander. Is what There's a bunch of different names for it, a cat and mouse or a mouse sanding pad. This will allow us to sand down into a fine point. So if you are building a box and the corners come together in the box, then this will allow you to get into that corner, whereas you can't do that with a round sander. So that's, this is a pretty handy sander to have. Um, I just happened to pick these up, the Ryobi ones. We have, I think, a pair of these. I think they're in the $20 range. They're not very expensive. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a high-end, real durable tool because you don't use this very often. It's a, it's a handy sander to have. It's not necessary because you can always hand sand, but it's a handy uh, sander to have. Uh, after that, yeah, give me that, uh, the belt sander. So the belt sander is also probably a pretty important sander to get. We do a lot of boxes with finger joints and dovetail joints. A, which is where when the fingers of the dovetails, when the box goes together, they usually stick out just a little bit and I've got to sand them down. Now, if you're on a budget, this sander will do everything. You can just put a coarse grit on this thing and you can sand those flush. If you're in a little more of a hurry and you have a little more money, you could pick up a belt sander. I use a belt sander with 36 grit paper and that will take it down really fast. Um, so this is the belt sander I use. This also happens to be a rigid which is a good belt sander. And this has never gone bad. This I've had this for three or four years. Uh, if it does, of course, you can take it back for their lifetime warranty. Uh, we'll talk about the six inch random orbit sander. So this is, this is a little more of a luxury item here. Uh, this is a six inch. Um, some people think if you're just gonna get one to get a six inch, I, I'm not of that opinion. Uh, while this is a little bit bigger, covers more area. The sander is more, almost twice the price of a five inch. It's also very aggressive. This is really better, best used as a two-handed machine. Let me move this out of the way here. This is better if it's used as a two-handed machine. And the paper for it is a lot more expensive. For the six inch sanders, it's uh, maybe two or three times the price. Uh, also, it's harder to find. It's harder to find the different grits that you might need for this. Uh, so for that reason, I, I recommend the five inch sander. And lastly, I wanna show you one more sander. I wanna hand me that. So this is just called a palm sander or an orbital sander. This thing takes quarter sheets of sandpaper. Um, a lot of people have these. This is what I used to buy many years ago. I don't recommend these sanders. Uh, they don't have the same type of action that a random orbit does. So they won't sand as effectively. It's easier to see the scratches from sanders like this. And uh, they're just not as convenient uh, at all to switch paper and things like that. So. I would, with the, with the prices coming down, I would certainly recommend a random orbit sander. If you happen to have one of these, it's okay. You can certainly make do. You can buy uh, the nine by 13 sheets of sandpaper, tear them into quarters and use this. But if you're gonna buy from scratch, I would go with uh, a random orbit. And let's take a look here at some of the paper. So the random orbit papers that I buy, this is 100 grit. You can typically buy these in packs of 50 or, or uh, 25 or something like that and you can save money with that and I buy the hook and loop paper So if I need to change my sandpaper, it's pretty simple. I just pull the old one off I line up the holes and I'll put the new one on and that's that's all there is to it for changing the paper uh, Another convenient thing for using these round ones. Hand me one of those sanding pads right there uh, Oftentimes you're gonna have to do some hand sanding they make uh, pretty handy sanding pads that actually will accept these round discs so you just, they're also hook and loop. You just line these things up and that's it. And so this is a, a nice sanding pad. Um, you can save the paper when you're done because usually you don't destroy a piece of paper on a project. So when we're done, if the paper's not completely gone, I'll take it and set it aside. We can use that on a future project. So the grits that I recommend, probably 80 or 100 uh, at the low end, then, maybe, then after that you'll need 100. Uh, then probably go to 150. After that, go to 220. Most projects you can stop sanding at 220 grit. Uh, if you need anything finer than that, maybe a 320, you can do that if you're gonna put an oil finish. Uh, we'll get talk a lot more in depth about the different grits of paper that are available when, you, uh, when we get into a project. Uh, so I think 
that basically covers our sanders. Oh, one final thing. Um, <clears throat> I do use a sanding pad, which is what this is. So a lot of times if I'm sanding a piece of wood, uh, the wood, if you put the sander on it, the wood is going to have the tendency to slip around, move around. And this acts as a friction surface so the wood doesn't slip. And you can sand on it. And it's a nice thing to, nice thing to have sander on to clamp it because the clamps will get in your way. So a sanding mat or a, a, mat or a sanding pad is something that's pretty handy. Hi everybody, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching and I have made a, a couple of small changes. Uh, I've decided to take the first video, the first lesson of the 16 week course and break it into eight subsections. When I got done filming it and I got done editing it, it was pretty long, it was about an, almost an hour and a half and I thought that was too much for anybody to sit through. So I just broke that down into eight categories, one for each uh, subsection. I'm gonna try to post one each day. So one, this one's coming up now, and then I'll do one each day until they're all out, and then we'll try to go, you know, one video per week after that. Okay, so one other thing is that we talk about a lot of tools in this uh, lesson number one, and I just wanted you to have access or to know what each of these tools are. These are the tools that I use every day in my shop. And I have uh, composed a list of all of these tools and links where they can be bought at the best price. And I'll keep a list of that or a copy of that in the description. I'll also have the list in a downloadable, like a PDF format, which I'll put up on my website. Uh, that's for anybody to download who's interested in having a copy of that. Once again, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found some valuable information in this. I know going through all of the, the tools can be a little bit tedious, but uh, the course should definitely pick up and get a lot more exciting uh, once we get into that. So thanks again, and we'll see you next video.